So as you may have determined, I did not die. Congratulations. Huzzah. Okay. Is there anything else you guys wanted to do before you head out dragon hunting? I think we're good. So we determined uh, you're going to be taking 16 days off in there? E I Yeah, that's fine. Parents will... We'll spend. Uh, we'll visit the Church of Meyer Hall and ask about what they think, how, how they think uh, it might be possible to uh, redeem a red dragon or, or convince it to change its ways. It's... I will watch as they laugh you out of the room. Vasco will just sit and face palm repeatedly until he is red in the face. Uh, he's 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 kind of he's kind of concerned. Like how how do they think it might be the best way to go about it? You know, more opinions are always helpful. Um, red dragons are not generally redeemable. Um, they are basically the epitome of corruption and destruction. Um, there are spells you can use to force them to uh, be redeemed. I think there's a like sanctify creature spell. It's an eighth or ninth level spell. What what is this? I need to know about this. It's in the book of Exalted Deeds. I don't remember off the top of my head. I've only ever had one player Sanctify the Wicked. Is that what it's called? Uh I'm I'm trying I, I, I ser a search found it, but the website's taken a while to load. Yeah, you have to make like a touch attack on them and then they spend like a year in a blissful place being treated really nice and at the end of it they roll a, a will save or whatever and if they uh, fail the save they emerge with their alignment changed to good. Ah, it is a level 9 sanctified spell. It, a necromancy good spell. Ah... <laughs> uh... Uh, so there are ways cost. to forcibly convert people. There are also spells like Morality Undone that uh, you can use to change people's alignment. But in that case, it isn't a willing change. It is a magical change. I would just wait for you to accidentally trip and destroy the gem of this dragon, and he just comes back pissed off. Oh, does he go into a, the gem for a year? Yeah, he goes into the gem, and the body vanishes. And after the year, if um, it returns as a good creature, if for any reason the gem is destroyed before the year is over, the evil creature comes back pissed at the caster. That has to be destroyed at all costs. Yeah, um, Sheehan did that in uh, one game. He was playing another one of... He was playing his dwarven character, and he was facing the Shadow Dragon, which was one of his former characters from the 90s. And he wanted to cast Sanctify a Creature on it, and he was like, yeah, but there's basically impossible to get the guy to fail a will save since he's a high-level wizard. Hmm. Uh. It would cost shit twenty. Cost you a level too. Thirty. Well, oh yeah, but you know whatever. Thirty thousand gold and a level. But you know, might be worth. Why do I feel like I'm gonna we're gonna find two years from now, um, a level one Ferenc in a church with a room <laughs> with vials upon vials with dates written on them of all these things They're just a pocket full of jingling full of diamonds I feel like I would have a heart attack if I ever saw that <laughs> don't well, crush these diamonds now <laughs> I, I almost had a stroke when Sheehan pointed it out to me that that was his plan I was like this is the villain of my campaign world. I've used him so many times and he's going to just 
cast a spell on him and end all of that. <laughs> Jesus. And because he was my oldest player, uh, there's no way that I'd ever be able to walk that back because he was in basically every game I ran at that point. <laughs> he was the Kenny of the early 2000s. That's awesome. That's a nice thing about eventually rotating out of some of your older players. You can start reusing material. Lake said that to me when, uh, I forget what game we were running. And he was like, oh, the Chaos game. When we started the Chaos game. He was like, oh, I thought you didn't like to repeat um, campaigns. And I was like, I don't really like to do it. I definitely don't like running them parallel like he was doing, where you have four different groups and they're all doing the same thing. I was like, there's no way I could functionally do that. Um, when we siege that castle with the weird, uh, vampire necromancer chick, um, when, when I did it before I joined your group, uh, the, uh, King Arthur guy showed up mid battle because in one of the other campaigns that he had just run in that scenario that guy was close by and was coming with the reinforcements but in ours we had sent him across the, the planet to go get reinforcements and we're like what's he doing here he's like nine thousand miles away and he doesn't have teleport like he's doing a forced march across the continent and he's like oh yeah i forgot about that like delete 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 <laughs> awesome but yeah, that the Chaos campaign was one that I did with Kenny. Um, the Cause and Effect uh, campaign was one I did with Kenny. So without Kenny in a lot of the games now, because he's uh, basically fallen off the map, I have 20 years of material that I can just go recycle. <laughs> okay, so 16 days to do all that stuff. Um, then you're heading back to Grimmel. I, I guess Vasca is just going to, oh no, you guys also have to run back and forth to Marin Hall. Um, at least once. I will proselytize during that 16 days. No, you won't. You're lugging treasure. Not all 16 days. Did you look at the treasure list? Oh shit. It takes us 16 days to get all the treasure? Oh damn. It's what? a lot. To give an I idea. Have no idea, but if you go back and look at the Quagoth treasure and the Durgar treasure, there's probably like 40, 50 tons of material you have to carry in 300 pound lumps across uh, rough terrain. This is not the uh, this is not the largest item, but just so I'm just going to give you an, a ballpark for one item. Heavy crossbows, 150 of them. Yeah, but how much do they weigh? I don't know, but they're heavy crossbow. <laughs> yeah. It's How many... <laughs> I, mean, I, got... I don't think we can carry a bunch of those at a time. Yeah, it really How just much... comes down to the weight factor. And a lot of times you just pick what yeah. you want based on things. Um, I didn't sit down heavy... and do the math. And I said this... Heavy crossbow is 8 pounds. Yeah, 150 of those. Uh, what's that, 1,200 pounds? Yeah. Yeah. Well, on the plus side, the dwarves are going to be very ready for any orcish assault. They're going to be ready for any assault. We just crashed their militia market right there. We're going to have bounties with every uh, weapons dealer in the, in Grimmel. Well, I think that's kind of Vasca's point, is that they're arming for war, having uh, armor and weapons dumped in their lap is awesome I like uh joseph wanted to get a harpoon made and the weaponsmith will make him one but he's not going to do it today because he's got 15 weeks of orders coming in assuming he's even allowed to take private orders
Was it still your plan to get a harpoon, Joseph? Yeah, I thought you said it was going to take a couple days, so I already added it to my list because yeah, no, it's that's been fine. a couple days. Yeah, that's fine. I just meant if you needed it today and you hadn't set it up in advance, that it was going to require some time to make. That's why I ask when you guys come up with ideas, if you're doing it now or you're waiting. Makes sense. So what else do you have in your treasure pile? Uh, we've got 60 chainmails. Uh, chainmails heavy as hell, right? I feel like they should be. Uh, chainmail. What does it actually say there? Chainmail is 40 pounds. <laughs> Get fucked. How many of those do you have? Uh, I think I said 60. Let me... 60. So That's over a ton. 60 times 40. Yeah. You have a ton of chainmail, a half ton of crossbows. Let's see, next one, 70 masterwork war axes. That's not too bad. I assume you're not bringing the normal axes? <laughs> uh, that's actually a good question if it was on the list I brought it <laughs> no I, I don't have the uh, Dwagar sheet open so I'm not, uh, I don't remember what whether the first level ones had masterwork axes uh, I think they did because I don't have any plain axes well if they did then you should have a lot more than 70 because there were like um, 80 of the first level guys and 40 of the second level guys that's a good point uh, what did they have? They have heavy shield. I want to point out that Asperance has slightly more strength and much more constitution than a heavy horse. And about the same <laughs> level of wisdom. <laughs> How do your stats compare to a donkey? Uh, He's vastly superior to a donkey. Uh, oh yeah, no, they only have 10 strength. 12 constitution? Um, yeah. They do have endurance, but even, I have so much more constitution that I, I have basically more constitution, uh, a higher constitution check than, than them, even with endurance taken into account. At least the donkey is honest about being an ass. Wow. I don't think Ferenc has ever lied about being an ass. Oh, out of character, I'd never lie. But in character, he would, he would, he'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm trying to help people here. So is step one of this bringing back enough that we can buy a portable hole? Uh, it might be. Do we want to, like, buy a group portable hole to make this whole process, like, more believable? I... D we just sold. <laughs> Guys, are you fine? I've already spent I mean, my we have, we have... I can cough up something towards that goal, yeah. If if we're going to try and take a dra uh, treasure hoard, like a dragon's hoard now, where it, like, it'll come in, it's going to pay dividends. I'm not arguing that. I'm just <laughs> saying it would have been nice to have had that before we all did this hour of shopping and spending our gold after we split the money already. That's fair. We, we it's it's more of a hindsight. All right, thing. we can just use my money. That's fine. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm I'm just giving him a hard time. I and I got five thousand gold for my share of it. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm purely just giving a hard time. Yeah, if everyone chips in five thousand gold pieces, you can get a portable hole for the party. Which works out perfectly because I've got five thousand two hundred. All right. So, so everyone now you're five thousand, and we've we've got a a communal portable hole to keep all the treasure in. I'm temporarily... Am I pitching in on that or no? Yes. I'm kidding. Sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll cross <laughs> something up. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. How much have you got, Vasca? Uh, well, if I'm not buying every... If I do buy everything, I'll have like 1,800 left. But if I need to pitch in, I can cough up something no, no, to... No, you're fine. Uh, one of my items was an exceptional greatsword as a backup weapon, but I've got two other backup weapons and a longbow. So I can cancel that off and... One other thing, and you're good. What, so you're going to pay 10000 
Um, I was going, he said 12 or something thousand, so I was just going to do 9k. Well, so first make a diplomacy check to talk it down, because it's 20,000. Good point. That, that would be a reasonable suggestion. I'm assisting with a 29. Oh, there, oh, nice! That's what you want to see. So Damn. you got five. You know what? We're gonna uh no that that's already What what does the twenty nine give you? That's five, so that's forty nine. You know, I'm gonna use my luck to make that a fifty. Nice. We're gonna get uh it is sixty percent of the price. Twelve K. We all need three K. So three thousand each? Is everyone okay with that? I can do 5k if you don't mind doing 1k, Vasca. Thank you. Cheers. One. I can do five. I mean, I haven't spent any of my money, really. Yeah, but I'm sure you have something to use for it. And I'm a greedy bastard. I might as well use it sometime. I'm lazy and only care about interesting magical items, so probably not. Well, now everyone else is, is trying to be selfless and fair and wants to get in on it, so I'll give up 5,000 for it as well. So uh, sure, we have we have fifteen thousand for uh for a twelve thousand item. So uh, uh actually all... Vasca gets three thousand gold. Ferenc, Ferenc, with all due respect, the adults are talking. Please play with your mace over there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I'm so... I am okay with this plan. Let's 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 okay. carry it away. Ferenc, Ferenc, go go play with your mace over there. Uh, uh, how about Joseph and I just do four K each? We, we split that, um, for Vasca. Sounds good. I mean, I coughed up the cloak earlier. That was like 2k, so... Fair. I'm sorry, I'm an asshole. Oh, good. You can have my thousand, and I will call it a day. Are you actually okay with, Joseph, uh, with that, Joseph? I just wanted to get fair and yeah, that's hard. time. Okay, Ferenc, the adults are, are done talking. You can join us again. Joseph, you don't have any cool magic you. items you want to get? I got a rope of stone. What's that do? It's a rope that you can command to make it into stone. And what effect does that have? It becomes stone. It become it has hardness of, of eight, uh, fifteen hit points. It 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 appeals to the uh, immovable rod school of thought. Oh, okay. So you can tie someone up with it or hang it from a cliff or something like that. It is a puzzle piece in search of a puzzle. Attach to harpoon to, to attach to dragon? That would be kind of cool. As soon as you stick it in the dragon, you command it to turn to stone. Something like that. That was one idea. I just don't know what I would do with it. Like, other oh, than it'd be a major inconvenience for the dragon to be have a stick sticking out of him. But if I managed to like bend it around a tree and then get, get it an immovable stone. rod, and then you can tie it around the immovable rod. Yeah, well, the thing is, once you stick the harpoon in him, uh, you can tie that to your movable rod, and you don't need it to turn to stone. It can't move. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's fair, I guess. I mean, even if it does, like, make the strength check, it's still going to take it out of the sky briefly. Enough for us to dogpile it. Well, enough for y'all to dogpile it. I'm just going to sit in the back and do my thing. Okay, do you guys have anything else you want to do before you head out? Um... I think I've harassed everyone here. I'm good. My autism is satisfied. Mine I have lots satisfied. of pearls. How many pearls did you oh. get? Oh, I'll ask I'll ask Vasca to get as many first level pearls of power as he can while he's at the capital. How much money have you got? He yes, will buy money. whatever you tell him to do and whatever you give him money for. Uh, I'll give him 3,000 and say buy as many first level pearls of power as you can with this. So, three. 
Uh, presumably. Unless he makes a real good diplomacy check. Vasco? Uh, no. I mean, no. It, might as well make a diplomacy check and then keep the rest. I will come away with a worse price. I will get kicked out of the shop. Ah, okay. So, three more. My, my understanding was we were just going to send Vasco with a list of, of a shopping list over to the capital and then just pay in installments as we get the, the shit sorted out. This thing should be a runner or something. Yep. Please tell me you're making these pearls into a necklace. <laughs> He's got enough of them now. You know, ease of access, it's very efficient. Would that technically take up a throat slot? Or would it be a chest slot? I don't know, I was just looking up how big a pearl of power is. <laughs> Are they from his grip? I need to make an adjudication of uh, whether or not... Normal pearl of average size. size. Yeah, but what's a normal pearl of average size? Like I'm not I'm not a pearl expert, but I know that they come in a large variety of sizes. I mean I would imagine like not larger than like a uh, well, not, I would, not larger than like a penny. Yeah, no, diameter. I wouldn't think that it would be larger than a penny, but I would think that it would have to be the biggest possible pearl you could get because you don't want to lose it. Like a standard pearl's like a quarter of an inch across. Um, see, this is the other half of my plan. The only thing that matters to me is whether or not you're wearing a pearl necklace. Well, so act, I, I guess I could wear, yeah, I'll wear a pearl necklace, why not? As the party steps up to aid him. <laughs> I think this is the part where Ferenc Googles pearl necklace. What? Pearl necklace? And he realizes the mistake he's made. Google it. Maybe safe search off. I, I see a lot of pearl necklaces. What about it? Um, type in porn pearl necklace. Try Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. This is a good option. Or the ZZ Top song. Ah, I see. I I feel like a lot of sex acts with weird names like this are really stretching. This one's not really all that stretching. Yeah, you have this pearly, milky film across your chest. It looks like a necklace. You all need uh, you all need to get your minds out the gutter, get your brains out the gutter. If it helps at all, you can also say the joke was for you to, you know, whenever some, someone does something evil, you can clutch your pearl necklace. Like an old lady. Oh, I'm going to laugh every time that comes up. God damn it. You can just see the look on uh, Ferenc's face as globs land on his chest. What is with you people? We're trying to be supportive. We don't judge. Okay. Um, enough fun. Let's play D&D. &D. Okay, can you guys see the map? Yes. I'll be right back. One beer isn't enough to deal with you people. Man's just going to take a cold shower real quick. Yeah, he's going to take a shower and wash off his pearl necklace. That was too perfect.
I'm glad I didn't find out about a pearl necklace so publicly. <laughs> I remember somebody making a reference to it. And I was like, I don't get it. I really don't get it. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, okay. No, at least I'm alone. Sometimes you hear a joke and you don't get it, and you're like, yeah, I, I don't think I want to ask for details. Yeah, if there's one thing I've learned nowadays, it's don't ask questions if you don't want to know the answer. Oh, yeah, for sure. I say that to people all the time. Don't ask my opinion unless you want it. I'm back. Welcome back. Okay, make sure your tokens are up to date. We are supposed to be level 6, yes? Yep, I just wanted to make sure that your hit points are right and your bonuses and everything were on there right. For the people who got even more hit points from their Amulet of Con. Yeah, that I definitely factored in. My, hip, my AC is actually the same as it was with that cloak. Except now I can actually move. How is your AC the same? Well, because I have a plus two. Uh, the the old arm was plus one. This is plus two. And I also have a plus one cloak of uh, armor with cloak. Oh, okay. Are the other tokens, players' tokens, supposed to be clickable? No. You should be able to see all of their stats, but you shouldn't be able to click on them, I don't think. Maybe you can, you can edit them. Anyone else edit someone else's no. token? No. I think when you assign a token to a character sheet, only the P person who's listed on the character sheet can do that. I did. I think I put it as the default on the tokens that you could edit them, but I think that's like a backdoor thing in Roll20. That once a character is assigned to a character sheet, only the people on the character sheet can do it. Yeah, player permissions, visible to Makes everyone, sense. see and edit, but you guys don't get the ability to edit because you're not ferrets. Can you see the numbers in uh, the hit point bars? Yeah, I just couldn't like click them to see if like what other people's AC and it was it, and if that was by design or what. No, that's just the side effect of dynamic lighting. Okay, sounds good. Also, are we leaving Merkholm to head for this dragon or? Yeah, you guys would meet back in Merkholm and go from there. That was your 16 days. Four days to Meyer Hall, four days to the capital. Probably 17 days because you're going to have to spend at least a day in town getting the items you need. And then four days back to Meyer Hall and four days back to Grimmel. That's good. Like I said, I didn't want to waste a lot of game time on doing all the mechanics of it. It just acknowledge that you have a lot of shit to carry, and you're probably not done. Okay, so as you guys are progressing, um, Vasca, your uh, fly speed is good or average? It is good. Let me put that on my sheet. And we determined that you needed to take a move action to hover? I believe that was our agreement. Yeah, if you have, if you're able to hover, then I, I think good or better can hover. Then it takes a move action each round and you have your fly speed, but you, you basically have perfect maneuverability if you're hovering. Yeah, I can like spin in place. But yeah, yeah, I can, I can, as a move action, I believe is what we said. Yeah, I just wanted to um, clarify that because I, I, just as I said it, I realized that hovering is a move action, but once you're hovering, you don't need to take an action to do that. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, where did you see that thing about having to take actions for hovering? I that I, I'm going off memory for this. I could be totally wrong. No, I remember you looked it up last time, but I'm looking at the uh, tactical movement chart, and there's nothing I believe it's it. in the monster mid. Yeah, it's probably where the tactical movement chart is, because it's for Or the EMG. It's not really significant. Um, I just wanted to look it up to confirm the math on it, but I don't think you have to do anything at all to maintain your flight at good. Okay, so um, you guys head off in the direction of uh, Mercom in search of the dragon, and you can give me a perception check. Ooh, I rolled terrible. And she has no stealth at all, so really, I'm just trying to determine distance. Um... At a minus 18, that would still give you a very low check, but an 8. So, uh, I think we will just uh, roll again. Right, roll again? Yeah, you don't notice her. She doesn't notice you. Um, ah, okay. Whoa, she definitely notices you this time. Um, yeah, I was on the fence about what I wanted to do with her with regards to uh, random encounters. I'd considered having her harass you in and out of Mercom as just a sidetrack aspect. But the uh, first run-in seemed to be kind of a bitter uh, ending for you guys, so I didn't want to make it unfun. I was seriously considering having her attack you when you were like completely depleted on your way home from the last trip. Well, so we we rested in uh, in the Brambley area specifically because of that. Yeah, no, I realized that, um, and that was what I was saying. Is I had considered that as a possibility. Fair, but it seemed a little too contrived to have her always happen to notice you or be in the area when you're there. And I hadn't really come up with a specific mechanism for determining where she would be in general. So uh, at the end of the day, I figured by that point she'd already flown home. Um, and even the march out of Merck homes, like four hours. So this being her morning run, uh, she's more likely to run into you in the morning as she is searching for caravans heading out from uh, Grimmel in the morning. Okay, so she moves at 150. So 
she can close to there, at which point you can roll another perception check. Oh my god, poor Joseph. Ugh, inference. I mean, my perception bonus is just crap. Yeah, what attribute is that based on again? Uh, it's, it's one of them, I don't remember. Yeah, clearly you don't. Yeah, it's cross-class for clerics because clerics are supposed to have high wisdom. They're supposed to already be plus four at first level, so it's unreasonable for them to also get four ranks. I always question clerics who roll one of the backgrounds that gives them perception as a class skill. I was like, that's so cheesy. Hey, so, you know, it all evens out in the long run, I'm sure. Both Kenny and Joe have done that. I was like, you're so... such a cheater. Okay, so Joseph and uh, Ference are surprised as the dragon swoops down. So she will dive down and breathe on you guys. So let's roll initiative. Oh, I'm still using my old dragon token. I made a special dragon token and then didn't uh, add it. Yeah, I never even uploaded it to roll 20. That's hilarious. And I've got to change my thing. Okay, Vasca, you made the perception check, so you see her coming at you. Um, she is diving down at you. She's probably about a hundred feet up at this point. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna fly over. Uh, here, I guess. Well, last time we fought, how how low did she get? Forty feet. Okay, I'm gonna fly. Five feet over and 30... No, I can't. I have to get wing over to go straight up. Uh, wing over see. doesn't allow you to go straight up. I'm talking power climbers. Yeah. So with a 30-foot fly speed, how much altitude can I gain? 15 feet. Then I shall fly 30 feet up and 15, or 15 feet up and 30 foot out. Is that accurate? 15 and 15. 15, 15, okay. I will be 15 up, uh, so I'll be 25 up and 15 over, and I am going to ready a slow breath at her. Well, so she, did she breathe fire on us already? No, she hasn't had her action yet. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, so she will swoop in on you guys and target Vasca. So she comes right up point blank to you so that she can breathe directly down on you. And then you can uh, do your breath weapon. So she needs to make a fortitude save, DC 20, which I think is laughable for her. But I would like to uh, go ahead and burn a fate point to give her minus eight. Okay, well, that would make the difference. Hmm, that is. So she will be slowed for six rounds. Okay. I believe that's a reflex save on my part. Uh, yeah. 80 tens. 
Does it hit the rest of us, or is it only hitting Vasco? No, it hits all of you. He's just 30 feet up, so he's within range of her. Or 15, 20 feet up, whatever he is. He's close enough that his 30-foot breath weapon hits her. Oh, this is going to hurt. 46 points of damage. That is a beautiful 8d10. What was the DC on it? Uh, breath weapon is 22. Ooh, barely made that shit. Joseph did not. Doesn't look like Ferenc did either. Xander is typing. Oh, Xander made it. Nice. Okay, so um, she will finish out her movement and disappear behind the trees to the south. Is that at half speed? Well, the last time we did this, we determined that doing it mid-turn uh, wasn't functional. So she'll be oh, yeah. very slow next round. Gotcha, gotcha. So she basically gets hit goes and goes, ah, and flies off to the south. So Xander, you're up. Um, That's five foot. Draw the bow. Um, is that... I can see about half the token. Does that is that fine with cover, or I'm not sure how that would work. You would still suffer the cover penalty. Okay. Um, I guess since I'll she just... knows she can no longer fly, she's getting to cover. Let me just move then. Uh, that's more than half, I think. Would that be fine, or? No, if she's got half cover, that's um, still the penalty. Okay, well, um, I'm going to make the shot anyway. Uh, let's just use a normal arrow. Let's try this new macro I made. Oh, I butchered it. Shoot. Oh, well. Um, you butchered your macro? Yeah, uh, well, I'll just manually roll it for now. Nothing even came up. Yeah, to cancel it because one of their functions didn't work. Ah, um, how confident am I on this? I'm fairly confident. Um, I'm going to use my luck to try and make that a crit. Which I can't do because I got two luck feats. Never mind. Um, that is one hit. Nice. Nice. Five points. Oh, piercing. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's why she takes out the archers first. Weird. Uh, that's the turn as I move and attack. Okay, Ferenc, you're up. Aren't I surprised? Sorry, what did you say? Wait, so how does this work? Because we're taking full rounds, not just partial actions. Oh, yeah, this is surprise shit. round, or oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I should round. not have. So I think you and Joseph didn't make the check, so you're just surprised this round. But then, uh, how is she moving that far if it's only a partial action? It's not a pr partial action. Your action for the round is that you're not surprised now. You just rolled crappy on initiative. So then, do I get a partial action or something? Well, so how, how do your surprise round work? Because normally during the surprise round you get one partial action. Yeah, the, pro she... the problem with the partial action one is it ends up being all janky with rounds, especially if you have people in in the round cycle and people Oh, I totally not. agree. So what I did is I took the 5e one is if you're surprised when you roll initiative on your turn, you cease being surprised. That's your action for the round. So 
you Certainly. you don't get to do anything this round. If you win initiative, you just don't suffer the penalty for being surprised, so you're not flat footed. But you okay. lost initiative, so you basically get to do nothing. All right, got it. And Joseph's in that boat as well. So then we are back to initiative. And she does not suffer an initiative penalty, correct? Nope, slow doesn't give an initiative penalty. Correct. Yeah, I, we, th we dealt with that last time. I thought it was kind of weird. But it makes you only take one action and move it half, so that's pretty brutal. Did we agree that uh, the time would tick off on her round or on mine? Um, generally, the way I do uh, dynamic uh, rounds is she loses six actions. So once she has acted six rounds slow, she's not slowed anymore. Okay. So if you punch someone at the beginning of the round and they're stunned, when their turn comes up, their action is to be stunned. And then at the start of the next round, they're not stunned anymore. Whereas if you punch them at the end of the round and they go first the next round, they're still stunned. Even if they go at the end of the round, they're still stunned because they're, they haven't lost their action yet. Yeah, I'll put the token on there, sir, or the marker, yeah, no, so I'll let you address. Okay, Joseph, what are you doing? That is a good question. First thing you're going to do is put your headset on. You fall down the well. I've fallen and I can't get up. I guess I'll use a cure light on myself. Okay. Potion of what is that? Potions? You have Potion those is that, right? Action? 2d4 plus 5 for the actual healing. Can't you cast your light? What were you going to do instead of casting haste? Bless weapon. But it occurs to me that haste is much better because she's over there and we're over here. And I guess maybe just another potion then. Have you been tracking your ranger spells? Yep. Just at 6th level you should have a couple of 1st level spells. That you can cast yourself instead of wasting potions. Except I didn't choose your nope. light. That, that's totally fine. I was just confirming that you were keeping track of your spells. Alright, that ends my turn. Move a little closer, move closer to Xander. I guess I wouldn't be able to tell you that necessarily. You might want to stay close to uh, Ferenc, who can heal him. Yeah, I was going to say that. You get one hit point back for your aura before uh, you drink the two potions. Perfectly average on your two potions, too. Okay, well then, she will cast Invisibility. Yeah, I didn't have her do anything up front because I was like, eh, she's a very aggressive charge in. And she made the same mistake last time. 
she rushed in with no defenses and got hit with arrows, circled around, cast protection from arrows, cast invisibility. And where was she before she cast invisibility? Uh, she was to the southwest behind the tree. Or the bush. Tree of the bush. Pick here. Whatever. 